Hi, it's uh, Roy and Val, and we're coming to you live from the Lansing Creativity Center. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We wanted to uh, revisit something. Back in February, we did a virtual winter warm-up, and you could, uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that, if you want to go to our um, video section on our Facebook page, you can see that. But uh, Val was making some of these really fun glass colbin, glass ornaments, using a torch. And um, so we had some people ask us some questions about them and, and we wanted to just revisit it. And uh, one of the things in particular was that sometimes they don't always turn out so well when you're first learning how to do them and you end up with some that maybe aren't the best things. They break or they're too thin or, or Val will talk a little bit more about it, but she's also going to tell you some things you can do with them. So yeah, so that's the thing that we got questions about too. I think in that one in February, we just alluded to the fact that there coefficient number is the same as one of our most popular glasses to fuse with. So when you have some that don't turn out, like I have a little pile right here, um, then it's not just like a, a total waste. You actually can sort of take them and if you're a fuser or want to get into that, you would be able to repurpose them by using compatible glass that um, you could just break them up and design on. I have several um, examples of them of just plates where we put them on, and Kayla's kind of taken a little bit of a visual, and I can talk about them briefly. They're <clears throat> it's obvious it's not that difficult to do. We've just put it on, like this is just on a white piece of compatible glass. Um, we're using 90, <clears throat> and that's what these tubes are as well that I'm gonna blow. I'm just gonna blow another one here in a minute too, just so you can see, but they start clear, then we put Frit in it. The frit is the crushed glass that's also the 90. And then when we blow them, hopefully we might get something like these ornaments that really are nice for trees because they are so lightweight and you can do them in any color you want. So if they don't quite turn out that way, this is kind of what we were talking about. And so you get some fun designs just by breaking them or laying them down. So what I thought I'd do is just go ahead and for those of people who didn't see it before, just blow one or two or and see how it goes. And then you can see that that process. And then I'll talk a little bit more about how I've laid them out and, and using double or single layer of glass under it, that kind of thing. So so this is kind of loud. You're gonna tell me about my glasses then? Yeah, yeah. Glasses. <laughs> yeah, and then also I was just gonna say if you have comments, you know, just uh, get us on the bottom of our page, um, or you can send us a message on Facebook or on Instagram. Um, you can always email us too at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. Okay, it's loud, so I'm not gonna do it right. So easy. So this goes, this is a fiber blanket, so we can't let that air cool. So we have to let it cool slowly. So this just insulates and helps that. Um, that would be something else sometime to talk about, maybe annealing in that. Because this isn't really annealing, but for now this is the way we get this cold and safe. So that's really all there is to it. Now this is an example over here though of if it gets too hot and people blow too hard, the wall thickness gets so thin that they're just not stable. So even though 
they were blown out and they probably look pretty nice. It's just so thin. I'm gonna grab this one, Kaylee, and this is really interesting, I think. How, do you see how that gets? So they can get so thin that they almost basically float. So you do have to be careful when you blow them that thin and they do pop open. That, that floating stuff can really be something people can get in their eyes. And so this is really important when you're doing it to keep glasses on. So, so anyway, what? Oh, I had a question. No, I was just saying, so as, as a beginner, you know, what, I mean, what's the most common problem do you think? Is it like staying uh, too long in one spot on the torch or I mean, well, how, how are they getting these where they're just blowing out one end? You know? Yeah, it's, that's the problem. You don't heat it this, even I don't heat it the same way each time. So each time you have to learn to read the heat sink you've got going on. So sometimes I may not have it as hot and I'll have to blow harder. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I may really heat the heck out of it and I blow the same way and it's way too hard and then you just, I mean literally it'll just pop, it'll blow out. So. The, the main thing about it is I think you have to learn to read it. You have to learn to read how hot the glass is. So, and the even turning. You know, the even turning is really important because if you don't turn it and you get a hot spot, when you blow it, it's only going to be able to expand on that side that is hot and the other side doesn't. And you get some interesting looking shapes that way sometimes. So, so. I noticed that, I don't know how well it showed up on, on the video, but I noticed that when you're blowing it and, mm -hmm. and you're getting the glass, well, before you're blowing it and you're getting the glass hot, it's got this nice kind of subtle orange glow to it. And, and so when you, uh, when you say that we need to look at it, are we looking for like an even, you know, glow to it? I mean, would I see like one spot hotter than another spot? Is that, that you visually? Would, is that visually you probably wouldn't. So mentally you would know you might have one by the fact you look down and you go whoops I'm not turning yeah, you know okay. because that's one of the big things until you get used to it you'll find you're turning you're turning and then then you'll start kind of doing this thinking you can spot heat it in areas and it just that just doesn't really work you got it you just have to do the total rotation but you learn to look through that bright orange flame and actually look at the glass. So I'm looking for the actual glow in the glass, yeah. not that orange flame. So it's like I said, it's just a little bit of a learning curve. It mm -hmm. isn't really, it's not hard. It's just like anything. It takes, you know, it takes a few times to, to get the hang of it. But, but it's nice to know that there's- In the meantime, <laughs> exactly. Because I think out, right? these are really kind of fun. And um, this, there's a couple examples. Like obviously we used a piece of aqua glass here, so you don't have to use clear. We have a white one over here set up, but this one really literally looks like I probably just took, you know, ones like this and then just sort of laid them in different ways. Because if you look close enough, you can actually see that what I laid on there, I actually left the pipes on. These are the pipes that the, the blow part, we call it pipe. Um, so that adds one, one kind of an aspect of a look. This one over here was simply I think I just used just the ball part themselves. So like it would be like a bunch of these just sit around and, and in any design. This one, um, and I, I promised I'd try not to cut myself this time. Um, I just, you know, sometimes would break off little pieces and then just drop them on there. So you get, that one actually looks more like a confetti look and it doesn't have the pipes, you know, on it. And so there's just different ways, like I said. These are these are the double thickness, which is standard, what we mm -hmm. usually do, two layers. And then just the, the balls on top. This one actually happens to be, it's a little irregular. And I think I just use different chunks or different pieces of of clear glass, compatible glass, and so it's kind of wonky. I mean, it has some edges, but I mean, you can get kind of, you know, just get kind of creative with it. And What a fun way to use of some scraps, too, or some of those right. odd-sized pieces of clear that you're not sure what you're going to do with it. Right. I thought that was a, a good yeah, use Yeah, and then you can always add, you know, to it if you want to. You could, you know, use... Um, Stringer, stringer or, or right. actually more fridge. You said you could, add more fridge. Yep, yeah, you could make a really design. I don't know, but they're just like I said, it's kind of fun. And to me, it was really fun to learn that my mistakes actually could get turned into something kind of unique. So, you know, that's kind of what we what we were going for there. So I didn't show you how to take take this off. And this is also sometimes in the beginning where if you have blown this a little bit too thin, 
the actual process of taking this off, if I want to really actually try to use it as, a, mm -hmm. as an ornament, is a little aggressive. And so if this does have some thin spots or it's not real stable, this is actually going to be um, kind of the test of oh, you'll know right then, survival. Huh? Yeah, it's kind of survival of the fittest. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you. We use this little scribe thing, and it has, it's the shiny, actually the shiny edge that we use. And I'm just going to put my thumb on the top. I'm going to put that edge right in the base of this, kind of right where it narrows. And I turn the ball, not, you know, I don't go around it with my hand. I'm just going to hold it kind of snug and turn the ball. And what I'm looking for is a scratch. And you don't always hear it, but it, can you see it? Okay, so if you can see it, and actually that one is pretty good, actually came around where I started, which often I don't do. But even if you don't come back around and stay right on the same line, it still will work okay. You just want to be able to see it. That's the important thing, so you have a scratch. Now, I got to do this towards Kaylee kind of, but she has glasses on too. Back up, Kaylee. <laughs> All right. And so what you do is you just hold the ball and you just take your little scoring guy thing and put it out there. And then... Well, that one came out pretty clean. That's pretty didn't? clean, yeah. It doesn't always have to anyway. <laughs> but a lot of times it won't be quite so clean. But the idea of this part is that we're going to put the cap in it, you know, like to hang. So that really does kind of hide a lot of unevenness. So that's how you do that. So that's, you know, if you want to try first. Then if that one would have broken, we could have just transferred it over to here and made another <laughs> out it, piece right? thing out of it. Yeah. So Great. that's kind of basically. Yeah, I, I know. I, I think they're so much fun personally. I mean, they look like blown glasswork, you know, a lot of it does. Like, like a little different than our normal fused pieces. I know you mentioned that they said you look like, they look like confetti a lot right. of times. Like you're making your own custom confetti. Mm -hmm. So what fun. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks, you know, for sure, telling yeah, us all fun. about that, Val. So we um, think we're going to be back next week, uh, same, same about the same time next Wednesday. Yeah, if you have so. any suggestions, we'll be yeah. happy to listen. And, and, yeah, um, we're always looking for ideas or topics to talk about. Um, you can, you know, reach out to us. Uh, you can email us at facebook at delphiglass.com or, or reach out to us, message us on Facebook or Instagram. Um, yeah. I think we're going to do some stained glass stuff like next week as well. I think we talked about, about it. I think we've had a couple um, requests about yeah, a couple of things we'll something. deal with, a couple tools maybe yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for joining us today. Yep.